This is an astonishing development. Kilauea Volcano Mystery Water Baffles USGS Geologists Water at the bottom of Kilauea Crater, Halemaumau, should not be there. Geologists don't know why it's there. As you can see here, you can see the rocks to the left, to the right, and that this green liquid, they didn't know what it was to begin with, if it was a liquid or something else, they believe it is liquid because it's growing in size. They will, of course, conduct more monitoring and examination of this. This is totally unprecedented, and it's something that is uh, unexplainable to the geologists. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory, Volcano Hazards Program USGS has a special page on this, Volcano Watch, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. This was put up starting on, uh, on August 1st. Water or no water, that is or was the question. The weekly article, activity update written by U.S. Geological Survey Hawaiian Volcano Observatory scientists and colleagues. They have flyovers regularly to see what's going on. And we have the aerial view of Helemaumu at the summit of Kilauea. It was taken during a USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory helicopter overflight on August 1st of course 2019 a small green patch was visible at the bottom of Halemaumau crater and they say it's a new pond forming at the lowest point of the crater the pond is about 1722 feet elevation the picture was from S Conway the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory scientists, the HVO scientists, usually base their research on observations, either visual or instrumental, or both. Uh, obviously, it's not feasible for someone to go down into the crater, but they do have various ways of getting to see and monitoring what they can, as far as they can, without putting a person down there, obviously. Interpretations come from those observations, so they must be as good as possible. Incorrect observations can and have led to erroneous interpretations. But what if an observation is tempting but unverified? In that case, it's time to hold the interpretations until the observations can be shown to be correct or incorrect. On July 25th, 2019, he says, I was enjoying my birthday when a friend sent me an email asking him if asking if HVO knew about water on the floor of Helema Umau crater. Talk about surprise. The friend's friend, a helicopter pilot, later sent a photo that showed a possible green pond on the crater floor and provided an oral account of it as being, quote, about as large as a pickup truck, end quote. The next day, observers in the helicopter which was collected collecting LIDAR data of Kilauea's volcano's caldera, provided another photo. They said the smooth, smooth green patch looked like water, but they had seen no reflection from its surface. Of course, we know water reflects, so where was the reflection? Then, on July 30th, a passenger in a different helicopter took a picture from a high altitude that showed a similar feature. This photo was posted on social media with a brief commentary. So is water at the bottom of Helemaumau crater or not? Everyone agreed that the photos could well show water, but could the green patch be something else? Another possibility is that the smooth green color comes from a flat surface underlying, underlain by ash or rock fall dust blown from the wall of Helemaumau and trapped at the bottom of the crater. In other words, like some kind of a broken off uh, piece of rock that happens to be smooth, of course. So, the green color, they said, could result from sulfur minerals or algae. A weak point of this idea is that large rocks adjacent to the supposed pond are not coated with ash, much less green ash. HVO received several inquiries about the photographs and the possibility that they show water in the crater. Water was on everyone's mind, and rightly so, but Helemaumau has never had a pond of water since written observations began 
so the presence of a pond would be unusual. If there is water, the next question is, where is it coming from? The floor of Halema'umau is now about 68 meters or 223 feet below the level of the water table, so it is below the water table, as measured in a deep well about half a mile farther south. While tempting, speculation was not in order. No one had seen a reflection or ripples on the purported pond of water, and all discussion was based on the suggestive but non-definitive photos. So before HVO could begin assessing how water got there, we had to first be confident that, it, what, that water is there. Well, one thing they could do is, for, for example, fly a hot air balloon over the crater, throw a little pebble in it or a couple of pebbles, see if it splashes. If it splashes, it probably is water. And they can take videos of this as this is going on. But anyway, that's just my comment. Going on with this, the article, with the water or no water question in mind, HVO scientists flew over the summit of Kilauea on the morning of August 1st. We can now confirm the presence of water at the bottom of Helema'umau. HVO observers on the helicopter over flight saw reflections from the green pond, the smoking gun for water. The pond has clearly enlarged since the earliest photo of July 25th, and now it's got reflections, which is, means that it's a liquid. So the image here for telephoto views of the water at the bottom of Helema'umau taken during a helicopter LIDAR survey on July 25th, on the left, when the pond was first observed, and a USGS overflight on August 1st, 2019, on the right, the pond grew slightly in size and depth between the two dates. An X marks the spot in both photos for comparison. Okay, that's a little piece of rock there. You can see how the water has grown, the patch of water has grown. Left photo courtesy of Ron Chappell, quantum spatial, USGS photo on the right by S. Conway. Now, with the presence of water confirmed, HVO scientists can now start thinking about the implications of water in the crater, revealed of the burden of having to prove its existence. Until we better understand where the water is coming from, it's impossible to understand its significance. However, at this time, there is no reason to think hazards at the summit have increased or decreased because of the presence of water. HVO is now exploring options for additional observations. The inaccessible location of the water deep within Halema'umau makes it impossible to see the pond for most parts of the crater rim, although one potential viewpoint will be examined in the coming days, weather permitting. If that proves out, a webcam can be installed with National Park Service permission to monitor the new pond. If not, remote sensing could be another option for continued observations. HVO scientists will closely monitor the water in Helema'umu, and as more information about the pond becomes available, we'll keep readers informed through future Volcano Watch articles and post to our website. Please stay tuned. This article is written by HVO scientist Emeritus Don Swanson. And they go up with it. We have a, an update following this. Volcano activity update. Kilauea volcano is not erupting and its USGS volcano alert level remains normal. And you can go for definitions of USGS volcano alert levels to the link it has here. Monitoring data for deformation have shown no significant changes in Kilauea activity over the past week. Rates of seismicity across the volcano remain low. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are low at the summit and below detection limits at Pu'u'o -Pu and the lower East Rift Zone. Reflection, reflecting the current normal alert level for Kilauea, HVO will transition from weekly to monthly updates for Kilauea in August. Hazard remains at the lower East Rift Zone and summit of Kilauea. Residents and visitors near the 2008 fissures and lava flows and summit collapse, collapse areas should heed Hawaii civil defense and Hawaii Volcano National Park closures and warnings. The 2018 lava flows are primarily on private property and people are asked to be respectful and not to enter or park on private property. 
Mauna Loa is not erupting. Its UHUS volcano alert remains at advisory because earthquake and ground deformation rates at Mauna Loa volcano continue to remain slightly elevated above long-term background levels. This alert level does not mean that an eruption is imminent or that progression to an eruption is certain. A similar increase in activity occurred between 2014 and 18, and no eruption occurred. Yeah, no, but we, ha we did have an eruption in Kilauea. And as we know, this is my comment, and I'm just informing you to remind you that the magma chamber underneath Kilauea is the same magma chamber which is under Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and Loihi Seamount. So it's one magma chamber with three uh, hot, hot points, one Mauna Loa, one Kilauea, one Loihi Seamount to the south of Kilauea. So if Kilauea is erupting, that means the pressure is coming out of Kilauea, Mauna Loa, and Loihi are not erupting. If uh, Mauna Loa is erupting, it means that Kilauea and Loihi are not erupting. You see what I mean? So it's that one body of magma, and it's got three outlets, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and Loihi Seamount. Now, this past week, going on with the article, approximately 135 small magnitude earthquakes, most are less than magnitude 2, occurred beneath the summit and upper southwest rift zone. Deformation measurements, we're talking about Mauna Loa, deformation measurements show continued summit inflation, suggestive of recharge of the volcano's shallow magma storage system. No significant changes in volcanic gas release on the southwest rift zone were measured, and ephemeral temperatures there and at the summit remained unchanged. For more information on the status of Mauna Loa, please go to the link below. Okay, so we have that link there as well. Three earthquakes with three or more felt reports occurred in Hawaii last week, magnitude 1.4, two kilometers down, south of also Pahala, depth of zero miles, in other words, it was on the surface. July 27, magnitude 3.3 quake, 26 kilometers northwest of Pahala, minus one mile depth. How could it be minus, but anyway, on July 26, and a magnitude 3 quake, four miles southwest of the volcano at zero miles depth, which is exactly on surface level, on July 25th. So we have two, uh, uh, 1.4 magnitude, 3.3 magnitude, 3 magnitude. So, you know, they're pretty big. Those are pretty big. I'll leave a link below for you for this concerning this very, very strange uh, thing of the water in the crater of Halimaumau Hale, or Halimaumau. I don't know how you pronounce it. Halimaumau or Halimaumau. I've heard the U.S. GS geologists pronounce it both ways. So we'll keep an, uh, an eye out on this because this is very unusual. I know that when we had the big earthquake in Greece in 1999 with seven magnitude, uh, the mountains around the Attica area, which is uh, the province of Athens, Greece, some people that had summer homes around the areas close to Thebes, which is about an hour's drive north of Athens, claimed that there were cracks on the mountains and there was green liquid coming out. Green liquid. Now, we don't know if that was water as well or if it was some kind of a, an overheated or superheated type of a metallic substance. We know that we have a lot of um, copper and aluminum rocks and the, usually the color that you see there is sort of a light greenish or a, an olive greenish color um, for the copper and the aluminum. So who knows, maybe this is just a, a, a metallic, a hot metallic substance and not water. It could be, and unless you get it che checked, uh, it could be some kind of a metallic liquid I'm just putting that in there because that's what uh, we saw in a crack after a big earthquake that we had, a major earthquake 20 years ago. So I'll leave links below for you for this on Volcano Watch for Hawaiian Volcano Observatory.
if you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.